and welcome back to cabinetry basics part three in part one i talked about the basic structure of a small wall hung cabinet like this one and in part two i looked at some of the simplest ways of joining these together with nails and screws and in this video we'll be looking at concealed fixing we're upping our game now moving on from invasive fasteners like nails and screws and into hidden fixings like dowels biscuits and dominoes and knockdown fixings like the domino connect and lamello's climax and also self-clamping non-marking connectors like the peanut 2 from intelligent fixings and the lamello tenso i'm also going to give a brief overview of each of these connectors in this video so there's a lot to get through we need to buckle up and crack on and it'll be a longer video than usual so there'll probably be a break in there somewhere as well now uh, because we're upping our game on the connectors we also need to pay more attention to the preparation of the cabinet components the sides the top and the base because these need to be consistent. I said before that these cabinets were 600 by 400 by 300, but in truth, it doesn't really matter if they're 598 by 403 by 297. What matters is that they're all the same, because if, for example, the top and the base are slightly different sizes, you're never gonna get that cabinet square. Obviously, one of the things we need to do with connectors that don't puncture the face of the board is to drill them in from the inside face and edge. And because we have to turn that through 180 degrees, there's a potential for all kinds of errors to creep in and ruin our day, especially with our first connector, the dowel. Now dowels have been around pretty much forever, so they're easy to get hold of, very cheap, less than a couple of pence a piece, and they require the least gear. They're also one of the most demanding fasteners that you can use. It's basically a round peg in a round hole. It either fits or it doesn't. And whilst you could just measure, mark, and drill carefully, a cheap jig makes a big difference. I bought this one from Amazon for 12 or 13 pounds. There are links down in the video description. And whilst it's kind of plasticky and pretty basic, it works fine. So let's get on and make a cabinet with it. I'm gonna take this one a bit slowly because the principles that apply to using this jig also apply to the other methods as well. And I'll be referencing off the outside face of the top and base and the outside edge of the side. So it's important to know which they are. You can either mark the face and side edge in the traditional way or just use a piece of tape, whatever works for you. I'm using 8 by 30 mm dowels for this, and the jig comes with depth stops that can be fitted onto the appropriate drill bit. It's worth testing it out on an offcut to make sure it isn't going too deep into the face of the board, and because we're going 15 mm deep into an 18 mm board, I'm using a regular bit, not a brad point or lip and spur, because that point can make life very difficult with only 3 mm or an eighth of an inch to play with. I've set the fence on the jig to approximately half the board thickness and I'm using a sliding square to mark in from the front and rear edges of the sides and top. That's another reason to be consistent in our dimensions. With the positions marked, I can reference off the edges of the sides and drill my holes onto the inside faces and then reference off the outer face of the top and drill into the side edges. A quick whack to clear out any debris and the dowels can be inserted and the boards joined. So not bad, and a reasonably sturdy joint, even just dry fitted. I will glue this one up, but next I'm going to use biscuits to join the base of the cabinet. Now the biscuit jointer, sometimes called a plate jointer, was invented in the 1950s by a Swiss company that became Lamello, and obviously over the years the patents held by Lamello have expired, which is how we're able to get a 45 quid biscuit jointer like this one in your local supermarket. If you're not familiar with them, a biscuit jointer uses a small circular blade, not unlike this router grooving bit, and by varying the depth that you plunge the cutter into the workpiece, you can make different sizes of crescent-shaped slot in the opposing edge and face of the workpiece, and a variable height fence allows for different thicknesses of material. As with the dowels, I'm working from pencil marks and cutting the slots in the edges of the top is straightforward. When it comes to cutting the slots on the inside face of the carcass side, it's a bit more challenging because there's only half the board thickness to bear against. So I'm using a simple L-shaped bit of scrap clamped to the biscuit jointer to give a bit more support. There is another way to do this, but I'll leave that for when I compare biscuits to the lamello in a future video. The connector is an oval-shaped, highly dried and compressed wooden biscuit, usually made of beech, which is glued into the slot, and the two boards can be clamped together. The wet glue expands the biscuit, further improving the strength of the joint. 
<laughs> so fairly obviously in a connector that depends on glue to make the connector itself swell up the dry fit is pretty loose so let's get this one glued up and out of the way so we can move on to the Festool Domino uh, this was the cheapest biscuit jointer I could buy in general in the UK today at just £45 but a good quality machine from a known manufacturer comes in at around 200 250 or so and the biscuits themselves are around three pence each for these fancy lamello ones so Festival's Domino dates back to around 2006-2007. This is one of the original models and still going strong. The basic structure of the tool is similar to the biscuit jointer, but instead of having a spinning disc slot cutter, it's more like a router. The bit doesn't just rotate though, it waggles from side to side, making a horizontal slot for the Domino connector. I've talked about the Domino at length before in other videos, so I'm not going to go into all that now. I will just say that I'm using a dummy plate on this one. This replaces the fence and makes it much more stable, especially for face mortises, as we'll see in a minute. And if you're interested in more details on this, then do take a look at the other videos. Let's press on and get another carcass built. There's no measuring or marking as I'm using the sprung pins to reference off the front and rear edges of the base and top, cutting narrow mortises to fit the 5 by 30 mil dominoes. The dummy plate comes into its own for making the face mortises in the carcass sides, no need for an L-shaped support here, and I'm using a slightly wider setting for the mortise as this gives us a bit more wiggle room in the gluer. The narrow setting on the edge makes for a very snug fitting domino, and the mid setting on the face makes for easy assembly. So even just dry fitted, you can see how much sturdier this is than the biscuit joint has. Arguably it should be the Domino's a 700 odd pound tool and the Domino's themselves are about four pence a piece at this size. I'm going to get this glued up and clamped. We'll take a short break while that happens. So be sure to join me afterwards when I'll be taking a look at knockdown fittings, starting with the Domino Connect. See you in a minute. And welcome back. So I want to take a quick look at a couple of knockdown fittings, the Clamex fitting from Lamello and the Domino Connect fitting. There are lots of knockdown fittings available, some of them with a slightly unfair reputation by association with cheap flat pack furniture, for example. But they're a very handy fitting to have around, especially when used as a permanent connector, because it allows you to build larger things in small spaces with minimal tooling and minimal work to do on site. And because it allows for things to be delivered in pieces, it also means that you can install where access is difficult. That holds true whether it's a multi-million dollar yacht fit out, high-end cabinetry in an old apartment building without lifts or elevators, or just getting wide things up narrow staircases in old Victorian houses. I've discussed the Domino Connect and the Lamello Clamex before, so again, I'm not going to go into too much detail here, but let's start with the Domino Connect. I've got to be honest, I'm not a fan of these fittings. Uh, it was these Connect fittings for the smaller Domino that convinced me that I needed a Lamello Zeta, but if you need a knockdown fitting and you have the Domino, then this is pretty much your only option. The Connect is a well-made, mostly metal fitting that's made up of five individual components per connection per joint. And the fittings themselves are a whopping £1.80 a piece or thereabouts, so even on a small carcass like these, you're into around £15 worth of fittings. You'll need an 8mm bit in your domino and you cut your mortises in the usual way. Domino on the narrow setting and the plunge set to 15mm for the face mortises. Changing the plunge to 28mm, the deepest setting, for the edge mortises. and then drilling the access hole for the locking screw using the proprietary bit. I can then start adding in the components. These metal fittings just push into the hole we just drilled and are locked in place with a nylon sleeve. And then the metal insert on the other side of the connector can be tapped home and the pin fitted to lock it in place, making sure the scoop in the pin faces the right way. The pins engage with the corresponding holes and the locking screw can be tightened up against the pin, pulling the joint together. So fairly obviously, a little like the pocket hole screws, there's a hole in the workpiece, more than one, that needs filling. You can get these little plastic caps to cover that up, but it's quite a big hole, uh, 14 mil I think from memory, and it was all of these things combined, the relative clunkiness of the connection, the cost, the damage to the surface of the work, all of those things had me looking longingly at the lamello. 
So the lamello is at heart a fancy biscuit jointer with a party trick it uses a special cutter and cuts a curved T-slot that the fittings slide into. There are no reference pins on the Zeta, so I'm just lining up the edge of the fence with the edge of the boards to cut the edge and face slots. And then drilling the much smaller, much neater access holes. The fittings slide into the T-slots and just butt together a quarter turn of an Allen key and are locked up tight, very tight, with each Clamex connector applying around 85 kilos of clamping pressure. So obviously an elegant solution to the knockdown dilemma. They're not the cheapest of options, the Clamex connectors at £1.20 per joint are less than the Domino Connect, but they do require a Lamello Zeta P2 which does run to around £1250, £1300 pounds versus £700 or so of the Domino. And it's got to be said, although it is a much neater access hole at just 6mm, it's still a hole in your cabinet that needs to be plugged. Let's finish up with a couple of genuinely self-clamping, non-marring connectors, connectors that pull themselves together and don't damage the workpiece in the process. I'll start with the Peanut 2 connector from Intelligent Fixings. I've taken a look at this before and I'll be taking a look at it again very soon. It's a jig and router system. This one aimed very much at carcass construction and it comes in at around £400 for the starter kit but there is a mini jig coming very soon which will bring the cost of entry down significantly. Unlike the others, this references off a centre line and we use a router with a supplied bit to cut our keyhole shaped slots in the face of the carcass sides. And then use it to drill into the edges of the top and base for the peanut connectors, which are then screwed in place. The connectors fit into the keyhole and tighten up as you slide them home. And that's it. That's an immensely strong joint that can be handled immediately. If you want to make that a permanent joint then it's just a question of running a bead of glue in there as well and it'll clamp itself while the glue dries. It's a very clever system. The peanuts are around 15 pence a piece, so a little over a pound's worth for this entire carcass and the peanuts get cheaper as you buy them in quantity. And finally, let's go back to the Lamello Zeta to take a look at the Tenso connectors. This is kind of a self-clamping version of the Clamex, but it doesn't exert anything like the same sort of clamping pressure. This was the connector that had me most interested, to be honest, in getting the Zeta, and it was hands down <laughs> kind of the most disappointing when I first got them. It's taken me a long time tweaking the micro-adjuster to get these Tenso fittings to where I'd consider using them for paying work, I've got to admit. Uh, let's throw a carcass together with them. The process is almost identical to the Clamex, but without the need to drill an access hole. Face and edge slots are cut as usual. Making sure that you reference off the correct face and edge. And the fittings just slide into the T-slots. and the carcass simply clips together. Yeah, I love the way that just snaps together now. That really wasn't like that when I first got the, the Zeta, unfortunately. Um, this isn't a super strong connector. You can add glue in there, of course, for a permanent joint, but you do need to handle it carefully until the glue is fully set. The Tenso connectors are around 70 pence per joint, so about a fiver's worth in there for that carcass just over. So these two connectors, in particular the peanut connector and the Tenso, are the kind of thing you could use if you needed to flat pack something for home assembly by the customer, because they're both very simple, hard to go wrong sort of simple, but I'd include a sachet of glue in there as well if I was just using the Tensos. But that's our whistle-stop tour around concealed connectors. I'll leave it there for this week, I think. It's been a bit of a long one, but I think I've covered just about everything that I wanted to. We've gone from a, a dowel jig at 12.50 or so to a Lamello Z2P2 also at 1250, <laughs> and connectors that cost just under a couple of pence to just short of a couple of pounds a piece and all points in between. Uh, be sure to join me next week for the concluding part four of the Caminatory Basics series, where I'll be talking about different ways of fitting a back to the carcasses and how to hang them 
them on a wall. We'll leave it there for this one. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, give it a big thumbs up or leave me a comment down below. And as always, thanks so much to my Patreon pals and my YouTube members for their amazing support. I really appreciate the comments and the feedback, the conversations that we have that help form the ideas behind these videos that appear on the channel. So if you'd like to be part of that conversation, part of that community, come and join us as a Patreon supporter or as a YouTube member. We'd love to have you on board. That's it for this week, though. Thanks again for watching. As always, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you next time. And welcome back. So I want to take a quick look at a couple of knockdown fittings, the Clamex from Lamello and the Domino Connect fitting. And there are lots of knockdown fittings available, some of them slightly uh, with a slightly unfair reputation by association. I'll do all that again. And welcome back. So I want to take a quick look at a couple of knockdown fittings, the Clamex fitting from Lamello and the Domino Connect fitting. There are lots of knockdown fittings available, some of them with a slightly unfair reputation by association with cheap flat pack furniture, for example. But they're a very handy fitting to have around, especially when used as a permanent connector, because it allows you to build larger things in small spaces with minimal tooling and minimal work to do on site. And because it allows for things to be livid,